I think this story is very important to tell because a lot of people think that it's, you know, what's happening to me never happened to anybody else. And the fact that I'm struggling with it for this long in this way, there's something wrong with me. Uh, that's one of the things about post-traumatic stress is we often feel like we're in it alone and that nobody uh, should feel this way and there's something wrong with us that we continue to feel this way, especially when it goes on year after year after year after year, decade after decade. And so what I like to tell about the story is, is that it doesn't matter how together you think you are, it doesn't matter what your experience is before the events happened, is, is that it affects us and it stays with us until we find a way to heal it. And it just doesn't go away. Um, we can sometimes push it aside, we can compartmentalize it, but it's still there and it's still a very big part of our life. And the beauty of thought field therapy is it allows us to really change our experience of that event. So um, uh, Ron and I and Shirley were um, doing a training uh, with professionals. These are people who are licensed uh, professional counselors. And um, we had asked for this a two-day training we're doing on trauma and thought field therapy and, uh, because they were dealing with what we've got in our community now, which is, you know, uh, you know we've been at war for 10 years and we're going to need everybody's help to deal with these guys that are coming back and their families. And so we had the privilege of spending two days with this professional group, um, helping them understand how they can be helpful. Um, and they didn't have to be a specialist in PTSD, they didn't have to be, but they had to know some basic stuff. So we were doing this training, and, and uh, uh, as always in a thought field therapy training, we ask people to come forward for treatment because we don't, we don't do role play, we treat people, that's how we learn. And the beauty of it is you don't really have to share anything. Uh, Disclosure is not really important. We just need to know what it is that we're working with in a general sense, so you don't have to tell the whole story. So we asked for a volunteer in the second day, or at the end of the second half of the first day. And we asked for a volunteer, and we got this guy come up. And he's an old guy. He's older than me. Um, and uh, we said, well, what would you like some help with? Because we were talking about working with the soldiers coming back. And he says, well, um, I was a, a chaplain in the Army in Vietnam. And um, it's a lot of years ago. And um, I'm still struggling with some things that happened when I was there. And he starts to tell his story, and he's telling it in this very composed way, and he's like just starting to say that I think it's important to, to try to, to figure out what else I can do to help with this. And I said, well, what's the problem? And so he starts to, and I said, what is it that you still remember that's so difficult and that still affects you so? And so he starts to tell the story about how he was in um, a combat unit and he was a chaplain who was in the midst of a battle. And as he was in the midst of the battle, they were getting killed left and right. I mean, he was seeing people die all around him. And at the same time that everyone, these people were dying, his job was to minister to them and to help them in death. And so he's, at the same time, he's praying to God, and he's praying for their souls, and he's helping to deliver them, and in doing his spiritual job. But at the same time, he's terribly conflicted by the fact that, how could God allow these boys to die like this? How could these men who are so valiant and so wonderful die in this kind of a situation? And this is happening all around him. And as he talks about this, he begins to, to melt down. The tears start coming. Um, the, the shakiness starts coming. He's becoming overwhelmed. You can see him back in that place. And I ask him at some point, is he there alone? And he's saying, yes, the other chaplains have been killed. And so he talked about how just overwhelming that was. He was actually shaking while he was talking about that. And then we did some thought field therapy with him. As we did the thought field therapy, he calmed down. He came back into the moment that we were in and left the there and then that was so overwhelming to him. And he could begin to talk about it. And, you know, and he was able to talk about what a crisis this was for him. Not only the, the threat of his own life, but uh, the crisis in terms of his uh, faith. Because he found himself at that point questioning um, his relationship to God um, and questioning God in a way that shook him to the core. Um, and that had been with him for, what are we, 30 years beyond it now? And it still affected him 
whenever he had to deal with people who were in those life and death situations, when they were confronted with the question of how can God allow this? Because it took him right back to that place. Mm -hmm. Now, he was, he was a professional counselor at this point, so he wasn't making his living as a chaplain at that point. I think part of it was it was just too much for him. But he was able to then, after we tapped, to be able to start to talk about the impact of that on him. Now, this is the first time he's able to have a conversation with anybody about the real impact on him about this in that time. Because every time he'd begin to even think about it or try to engage in talking about it, he would become overwhelmed and he would have to step away from it in some way. Either he would, he would just have to shut down completely or he'd have to take himself to another task or he'd just avoid it. And that's the beauty of the TFT is it allows us to get to the healing that needs to happen. And the beauty of this was, uh, I was just amazed that he stepped up in front of this community of people because everybody knew him. Everybody knew his story and everybody knew how he struggled with it, but nobody knew how to help him. And he's a professional counselor. Hmm. And he was a professional uh, minister, and yet he couldn't get through um, the hurt to the healing where he needed to, to go until we did the TFT with him. And um, he was able then to do things that he'd never done before. He was actually able to reach out to the VA and say, I need help, which is the first time he'd done that. Um, and I was so pleased that he, uh, he contacted Ron and I and said, can you help me be able to get the ongoing help I need to do with this. Because the tapping allowed him to bring the emotion to a place where he could begin the process of healing. And so he needed to reach out for more help. So I love the story because it says, you know what, if you're just some kid, you know, who's 22 years old and who's just come back and who thinks that there's something wrong with you and you should be able to handle it, I love to say to him, look, this guy's a professional chaplain, he was an officer, um, he was a professional counselor. He's well respected in his community. He couldn't deal with it either until he found the right help. And the key here is don't give up. Keep looking for the person that you can connect with who will help you and keep looking for the techniques and uh, the changes in your life that you need to make to be better because you can be. Don't give up on yourself. Don't, and don't underrate yourself because you're not able to do it on your own. PTSD kills by isolating people and by making them and come to a place of hopelessness. That's when they're at risk for suicidal behavior. Whether it's, it's killing yourself with a fast motorcycle or it's killing yourself with pills, it's that isolation and hopelessness combined that bring us to a place where we're ready to self-destruct through alcohol or drugs or some other way. You don't have to be alone. And you don't have to, to keep reliving it over and over and over again. That's what TFT does, is it takes it back to a place where you're in this reality, dealing with what's happened to you in the past. You're not in the past trying to cope. 